Nancy Lee Grant is an American actress known for her work in daytime soap operas, including the iconic roles of Julia Wainwright on Santa Barbara and Alexis Davis on General Hospital. She has been nominated for countless awards for her work on both shows, winning two Daytime Emmy Awards and a Soap Opera Digest Award. In addition to her other television and film roles, Nancy Lee Grant also works with various charities, including Rain, the Bob Grant Foundation, Smile Train, and the Bonnie Adario Lung Cancer Foundation. I am grateful that I've gotten the chance to know Nancy more in our years of working together and that she was willing to share some of her extraordinary experiences with spirit. I hope you enjoyed this conversation around how spirit blesses our lives and the importance of building authentic faith through undeniable validations. I am so excited to have you joining me right now. You know, I feel like we've been working together for so many years and I just, I think it will be really great to follow up um, on everything that's unfolded, you know. A lot. Yeah. A yeah. lot, a lot. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, one of the things I really appreciate about you in particular is that I've watched you over the years and when you wholeheartedly believe in someone or something or a cause, you really get behind it. And I have felt so much support in terms of me and my work over the years, you know, so I just want to thank you for, for that. Well, it's my pleasure, first of all. And secondly, I don't, I can't, it's not in my makeup to do that for something that I don't really truly believe in and stand behind. So it's, it's really? not a willy nilly thing. It's a very intentional support because I believe in it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Well, I love that and I'm grateful. Um, so I cannot wait to share with my listeners some of the amazing things that have transpired that have come through the readings with spirit. Um, and, you know, for me, it really comes down to building authentic faith. Because when I do these readings, I know it's real and I know you can trust me, right? But when I first work with you, you may not know that. And so I feel it's my job to get spirit to bring through undeniable evidence so that you can walk away knowing without a doubt that spirit is with you. And in you know some of your readings, um, you know, that we've done over time, it's it's almost been like they build one on the other because for a while, I would love for you to share the Richard story. Um, but we were talking about this future special someone coming in, right? And you had to go on faith. Oh, yeah. All, yeah. Right. So why don't you share with us um, what that looked like? Well, first of all, this belief, this faith that I have now, this has been sort of an ongoing journey for me. Um, religion didn't do it for me uh, because I'm a why girl. I want evidence uh, and I looked for it. And for the first 20 years of me seriously researching some way to believe in the connection between heaven and earth, I did a lot of this, of that, of whatever felt was interesting to me. And, you know, what ended up happening, it started when I really turned 40. All of this, all of these signs that I had been looking for, but I had sort of been insistent on them when I gave up the idea that I had to uh, see it in front of me in order to believe. Um, I, when I gave up that idea, all of a sudden everything started, all these signs came at me. Uh, all of these experiences, first James von Prague, then John Edwards, and then I think it was John, I don't know if it was one of them that connected me to you. Um, and when my dad died, I, I, I saw undeniable signs and I'm not a pushover. I need, I need to have answers. And I need, when I ask the question why I need to have answers and maybe some evidence. Um, and I got all that, whatever I did, I, I, I saw orchestration from the universe that was undeniable to me. I love that. So you were, I mean, John, and I've had just things that, that, that really I, I, I don't even question anymore, but you sit there and your, your reaction is, how, how can you do this? How can this happen? And I started out reading near-death experience books. And that led me um, 
to uh, Dr. Moody and, and Dr. Morse. I was standing in the Bank of America after reading Betty Eady's book, the, uh, having yeah. a near-death experience and a piece of paper was stuck to the bottom of my foot. And I looked and said, Betty Eady will be speaking at the Learning Annex. Wow. And they previously said, if I, if I, I, I need to see her face to face so I can determine whether what she's saying is true or not. Anyway, so then these things kept happening to me and happening to me and happening to me until it led me to you. So our first reading, the first connection we had, I'm, and I'm going to get to Richard, but I want to get to this first because this was the first thing that you said to me. I had been wanting to go on this trip to Africa that my friends had taken. And my friends are uh, financially uh, better off than I am and I'm fine. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm very good, but they have more. Uh, so their trips were brilliant. And so I went through with their travel agent and this was going on for months where I was trying to figure out how Kate and I could go there and have the experience they had. So the travel agent worked all this out. And when I asked her, I said, well, how much would this trip be? And she goes, well, it's 30,000 without airfare. <laughs> and I'm like going, well, that's a year at Kate's kindergarten. And I really can't, that's out of my, that's, that's out of my budget. So uh, that's, this is not going to happen. Uh, and so I let it go and just moved on. So the first thing you said to me, have you been thinking for a while of going on this very special trip? And so I said, I have, but it's not cost effective. And she said, well, you named my father. Mm -hmm. I had my Nana's picture and my father's picture. Your dad is strong. Yes. He's, we call him Santa in the sky. Uh, <laughs> he's I, good. He's I, really he's good. really good. Yes. And so I had my dad and my Nana, who I was very close with. And you said to me, I see your mom on your mom's side, which is Nana, and your is Robert. That's how, and I immediately went, <laughs> okay, this is got your attention. Interesting. This, you got my attention. Then you said, are you thinking of going on this trip? And I said, yes, it's, it's not cost effective. Then you said, and there was no mincing of words. You said, well, your father and your mom's mom and your team up above, want you and Kate to take this trip so badly that it'll be a soul evolution for you both. You, you, they want you to have this trip so badly that they are gonna work out a way for, for, for you to go. And that was April 30th at 10. That's our reading was at 10 a.m. Oh, wow, you remember. <laughs> May 1st, and this was three or four years ago. May, four years ago, I think, five years ago. May 1st at five o'clock PM, I get a call from this woman who used to handle my account at this place called Fireman's Fund. And she took very good care of me. I was going through tough times years before and a tree fell and they were gonna cancel mine. Anyway, she fixed something for me and took a liking to me. Then she put me in sort of like a VIP group and then mm -hmm. left, moved on, but she wanted me to be taken care of. So this is 10 years later and she goes, hi, Nancy, this is Ellie. Um, do you remember me from Fireman's Fund? I said, of course, you were so sweet to me. She goes, well, I'm back with the company and the company and I was going through your stuff and I noticed that you were paying for two different earthquake insurance policies. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I said, yes, because the agent said, because I had a lot of damage in the big earthquake said, there's now a cap on what you can get in California. So I, they said for me to get another one to cover what the other one wouldn't pay for. And she goes, well, that's all fine and good, but it's illegal to have more than one earthquake insurance policy in the state of California. So I went, oh, I didn't know that. And she said, so I went to the head of, I don't, I think it was Wells Fargo now, the company had changed. And, and I showed them what had happened and they agreed to give you $30,000 back. I'm sorry, it was 31. I was told it was 31,000. And then Ellie came back with the same number. We've what? agreed to give you back the $31,000 that they shouldn't have taken. I would never have known that that money was due me. Never. Wouldn't ever have occurred to me to look. And it was the exact same amount needed for that trip. 
Wow, that is unbelievable. See? I mean, you can't beat that, right? No, you can't. So, that is so, yeah. so inspiring. You know, that just shows us that money's just energy. And when we have a pure intention to use it to bring joy or do good, the universe always has a way of making it work out or replenishing the money. So, so you went on the trip. This was life-changing what we witnessed and what we witnessed together. And we have a really strong connection, Kate and I, anyway. Um, again, a little side story is when I thought I was pregnant with Kate uh, and it was not, she didn't come in the way that I had intended. But when I realized I was pregnant, I went out on the balcony of this beach house that I was renting I looked up at the star and I said, Kate, I'm ready for you if you're ready for me. Not knowing if it was a boy or a girl, but I always wanted a girl named Kate. And the star literally shot from right to left. Oh, of course it did. Of course it did. <laughs> My friends now say to me, yeah, of course. Right. <laughs> they, nobody even questions me. Yeah. So, you know, I, you know, we just had, it, it was soul evolving. It was a, 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 illustrate it was an experience that cemented again the connection between heaven and earth for both of us right that things happen for reasons and everything has a purpose and we may not know what these things are but it's real right and it was just uh, soul evolving it's just so inspiring to hear because you know miracles happen when you're open and receptive which you were therefore it unfolded. And it's also part of a soul plan. You know, when I do readings and you know, I've said this to you, mm -hmm. I'm reading your potential soul contract, the things that are inevitably going to happen if you let go, go with the flow and um, embrace it. But we have free will, right? Mm -hmm. And so we can alter that destiny because the future is not set in stone. That's our, that's our gift of free will. And so, you know, if, if really your intention is pure, that trip was meant to happen, you get out of the way, generally speaking, you know, the predictions unfold. And so that's, that's what happened in this case. Well, that's the beauty of you for me is that we've had a number of, exper of experiences and each time it wasn't something that I could explain away. It wasn't something like, you know, you seem sad or you're going to meet somebody or something general where I can always go, yeah, okay, well, sure. really. you are so specific and you pull things out of places that I, it hadn't even occurred to me. And you, you have demonstrated to me your gift, your talent to do this so clearly to me that I no longer doubt it. So the beauty for me is that when you and I have a, you know, I'm lucky enough to have a reading with you and what I've been doing is giving gifts of, right. to my friends to you because there's, to me, there's no greater gift. A priceless gift, I love that. It's a priceless gift. But so I now just expect it. I don't question it. I get out of the way. I don't have resistance to it. That's amazing. And and so it's so, you are so incredibly helpful to me. And, um, you know, there are times when I'm just really don't know what to do, or I'm so baffled by something. And so to have you as a source of a place that I can go for clarity is, is priceless. Mm, that makes so, me feel good. And yeah. that's why, that's why I do it. Ultimately, you know, we have our own connection, but sometimes it's, it's hard to be objective, you know, when we're emotionally caught up in it or tied to an outcome, yeah. you know, so I can go in and, and, and it really does help working with people like you when you are believing and there is no resistance, it makes for a much stronger, clearer reading. Yeah. Um, and so I really appreciate that about you. Uh, that's, that's fabulous. So speaking of um, soul contracts and gifts from above, let's talk about Richard. Okay. So this to me, I made many efforts 
to mate in my life. Um, 99% of the time, it was me that got in the way. I also think I grew better on my own and that was the way it was supposed to be. So through each one, it was, so mind you, I'm now 60. I had Kate on my own, I raised her by myself. I had reached a place where I thought, you know, I don't have to do this anymore. I'm not going to look, I'm not going to, um, I just, I was very happy. I had, was able to look at my life and see what I had accomplished. I was very pride, I had pride in the fact that I had grown myself and now my daughter. I had reached a place where I was able to look back at my life and see what I had accomplished and that I had grown myself well. I had put the time and the effort in and paid attention. And now I was growing, I grew Kate, I was growing Kate. And I thought I was giving her the things that I always dreamed of giving her. And it, my life provided for that. And I was very grateful, very happy. I felt like I could, when I die, I'll die happy. Mm. And I had sort of given up, not in a sad way, but in almost like a relief, sense of relief, this notion that I was going to meet that person that I had imagined myself. Mm -hmm. For me, I was either sexually attracted to someone and then I would turn that into something it wasn't, something more, or I really liked this person a lot and wasn't able to physically connect. I couldn't quite get the two together. And when I was 19, I wrote down, you know, all these things are 18. Every year it was the same. You know, I'm as attracted to him as I like him. He likes and loves me e equally. He plays music. He's a professor. He's, uh, and I have the papers somewhere in a bin in my shed that um, he would love my child and be a great influence. And I was very detailed. And, but I just thought, you know, it's okay. It doesn't have, so you said to me, all those things, you said, and I have all this stuff on tape, by the way. If you, you said to me, you think this isn't available to you, but it is. And you really, your heart is closed to it. And that's okay. But I assure you that when you, if you open your heart up and, you just allow this in without resistance and without putting all the dings from grabbing the wrong end of the stick, st the stick before, it is there for you. He is waiting for you. And so I'm 60, right? Mm -hmm. When you're saying this. So this is the year Kate's going to school. So I, about six months prior to Kate going to school, I just gently went, you know, okay, I'm, I'm going to just, if you're there, let, I'm just going to open my heart. I'm going to, I don't remember specifically what I did to do that. I think I just gently just went, okay. And I started watching, you know, movies of people being in love and, and, and enjoying that. And, and, you know, just not having any dings on it. And I, it was about six months because I knew Kate was leaving for college and the two of us were so happy together. And, but she had to move on. And how was I gonna be alone? So wouldn't it be nice um, to have something that just worked? Mm -hmm. And it was easy. I didn't have to get fixed up on a date. This was all part of it. There would be no dating. There will be no fixing up. There'll be no Tinder totter or whatever these things are. <laughs> if I have to put one effort into it, I'm not interested. So I take Kate. Kate is a very talented singer and musician. So I took her to USC Thornton School of Music. A friend of mine worked there and not at the, I mean, at the, uh, she was head of the. Uh, the department. The department, the medical department. She was a doctor. And so but she said, meet me for lunch and I'll take you through Thornton to look. And so I, I went, uh, but just like, you know, I'm wearing a baseball cap, nothing, just, you know, bringing Kate in. This is the first, furthest thing from my mind. Sure. And there's Richard sitting on a bench with a baseball cap and a guitar, right? And all he did was look up at me, one, one look, 
just like, hi, Be, these blue eyes, whatever it was, I literally just went like this. I went, and then I just kept walking and I called my best friend, Pam. And I said, I just met the man I'm going to marry. I, I, that's, I met him. I now, that's the guy. I knew nothing about him. Uh-huh. Nothing. I, I. It was a soul recognition. Apparently it was literally like a thunderbolt. You know, it was like, mm-hmm. nothing like that has ever happened to me before. And so, you know, I found some way to talk to him again. Or he was in the office, you know, because I, I, I didn't know who he was. And so anyway, I, we connected because I figured he was a professor there. And I said, oh, I know Mike Post. And, you know, he goes, Mike, he's one of my idols and blah, blah, blah. And we, so he gave me his card. And he said, oh, if you, you know, I can't remember what it was. It wasn't datey at all. And so I used his card. I used his card, made some excuse saying, oh, I'm a single mom. And I just, do you have any advice for Kate? And, you know, so he connected her with a, he said, does she have a singing teacher? I said, no. And he connected her with the singing teacher that changed her in a way that, I mean, that's why she sounds the way she sounds now. And um, it turns out that, he was the teacher at USC. So he was sitting on the judges panel when, you know, we didn't know that until the day. Uh, anyway, Hi. so he gave something great for her. She got into the school having nothing to do with him. He right. wasn't even the judge. And he was resistant, you know, he was, so it was this slow kind of thing where I had to like whoosh, fish uh-huh. him in because he was, he's such a moral, ethical guy. He was thinking mom of a student Right. You know? But anyway, it took six months, but I reeled him in. And <laughs> well, and, and I, he's, he's, he's out and we're, we're getting married. So, oh, so happy. We, we live together. We're, it, it's been four years. We're, we're mad. Incredible. I just remember in multiple readings, we would say, all right, I'm getting, there's a Richard, right? Oh, that was it. I totally, yeah, of course yeah. you named him. Right. Your dad named him or spirit guides or whoever. You named him. His name is Richard and yeah. he has salt and pepper hair. This was years, a couple of years before I met him. He's got salt and pepper hair. I have to go back and listen because you described him. He's tall. Um, and his, you said his name was Richard. Yeah. And then after our first real date, uh-huh. I go to a small reading with you and I sit down and you say, who's Richard? And I said, he's coming to my house tonight for dinner. I remember that. <laughs> I mean, it's so specific. I f- can't oh, believe yeah. I forgot that. You, you said, you, there's this man waiting for you. His name is Richard. He has salt and pepper hair, which right. Richard does. Right. He's tall uh, and it'll be instant. And oh, I- you, oh, wait, you also said that he said he's international. That oh. he has, uh, he works around the world and Richard teaches all over the world. And of course he is one of the top jazz musicians in the world. So he travels, mm. he's been traveling his whole life, you know, when he's not teaching. That is incredible. And oh. it's so amazing. You know, there's so many things we could talk about just with that story. Um, the first being, I love how you said you were good on your own. You weren't needy. You weren't needing some other person to complete you. You were whole and complete and solid. And you just went about your business doing you, being you, right? And that's where, and then you got clear on, okay, I'm open. And then you started watching movies that, you know, put your energy in that same frequency. So the law of attraction came in Mm -hmm. and took care of the rest. Yes. And I think so often I work with so many people, especially lately, that are single, lonely, desperate, searching. And the guidance that always comes through is like, time out. Don't, don't do that because you're going to attract someone who's desperate and yeah. you know needy. You want to work on you and trust that if, if you take care of yourself and you do things that bring you joy, that's natural, it. Yeah. Right. The joy, because if you're doing that, you're raising your vibe and you're being yeah. you and naturally attracting other people that mirror back that same energy. Yeah. And, and also so- just to throw in, I, since I was 38, I was uh, an ex-boyfriend who was 
dumping me more or less gave left me tape the law of attraction esther hicks uh, abraham tapes yes and i devoured that and then i ended up meeting esther jerry and because i was Mm -hmm. early in on it and so i went to many seminars you know this is is an opportunity because i i want to sort of be um somebody who illustrates the possible for other people you know so this is a good way to do that and and you know let me be a beacon of hope yes yes people need it right now and this is why i really wanted to talk to you today because you know there's so there's so much chaos and challenging times and you know people they need to feel like there's something bigger going on behind the scenes orchestrating their lives um, with them obviously we co-create it right um but that we're not alone we are not alone and and we, when you pray, you have to trust it's not one-sided. Spirit is hearing you. And sometimes the things we pray for, um, you know, prayer, it's all about divine timing. And so if it doesn't happen right away, I think sometimes people go into doubt. And, you know, and that's kind of the case with you. It was a multiple readings over the course of maybe two years, but you kept your faith. And sure enough, it all, you know, came full full circle into fruition. And, and so many other things. We're just talking about two isolated things. There were so many other things. Also, remember the orchestration of this. I was, I'm, I'll just be honest, I was um, renegotiating my contract. Mm-hmm. And I literally was at a point where I was going to leave because mm-hmm. it wasn't about money it was about fairness and i i want things to be fair and i want there not to be ageism or sexism or any of those things involved and i want and i was going to you know stand on my laurels on that Mm -hmm. and um i was so angry i wasn't able to even see reason uh which was not beneficial to my greater good um i was really blinded by um, things that weren't helpful. And so I, I wanted to talk to you so badly. I thought, well, I, I can't, you know, I, I am very respectful of not bothering you. And also, you know, I just thought, I, anyway, the next day I get an email from you. Isn't that amazing? And you know, asking me to do, you know, if I, wanted, if I would participate in this with you, which I was happy to do. And in exchange, it wasn't even an exchange. You sense that something was going on. You say, I'm going to talk to you for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And you said to me, sign your contract. Sign your contract. Do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm so glad that I did. Oh, good. Yeah. So you saved my ass. Oh. But, but... timing of that. I mean, come on, I hadn't talked to you in a year. Right. Yeah. No, um, there's no coincidence, right? That was a synchronicity and that I was really feeling you and you were feeling you needed clarity. You needed objective, grounded guidance. And, you know, again, I I give myself you for a reading with you for my birthday every year. You do. That's my gift to myself. I can't think of a better gift, right? It's, it's really priceless and meaningful. And um, it says a lot about you, you know, and, and how advanced you are. Um, but more importantly, I really feel like the universe gifts us, you know, it's, it could be material in nature, but only if it brings you joy, right? So the gifts that come, they can be connections, people, um, experiences, miracles, healing, a health, you know, healing, whatever that looks like. And sometimes it's things, um, but it's the intention behind it. it. It lights us up. It fulfills us from the inside out. It brings us joy. And, um, you know, so what advice would you give listeners? Because I know there's so many people struggling right now who are lonely, they're desperate, they, they're in doubt, um, and they really need some hope and faith, um, whether it's about finding love or purpose or whatever it is, what advice would you give? Look for evidence. 
it's if you're like me, you're not going to believe something just because someone tells you to or because you want to. None of that worked for me. I read books, I read near death experience books, all of them, because a couple of them were questionable, but there's, there's evidence. I read Edgar Casey books. I read anything, I read Dr. Moody books and um, Dr. Morse and other people. I, I look at, I read, I, I kept going to physicists that had, mm-hmm. I watched the near death experience of this neurosurgeon and I can't remember his name. And the woman that had the stroke, that the, the, her whole brain shut down. Oh yeah, I, it was those things that I, I I just devoured anything like that. Not anything that seems cuckoo or crazy or you can't believe it. Because even Betty Eady's book, Embraced by the Light, was one of the first ones back there. I thought she could be nuts, you know. And then. I find myself, and, and she lived on the East Coast. I thought I'm never going to meet. I'd love what I want to do is be this close to her, so I can like look her in the eye. Because I think, as an actor, sometimes you're, you 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 have that judge a good judgment of character because you're always investigating somebody else. That's a great and point. The, the truth of somebody else, or just the truth. And so I end up this close to her, and. I kept doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And this is like, you know, 20 years. This just doesn't happen overnight. And maybe it can. I was resistant. Show me, show me, show me with my arms crossed. <laughs> but I kept looking. I kept looking, investigating, investigating, looking for evidence. Then all of these things pop up. All of these things pop up. Um, time after time after time, it, things kept coming and coming and coming. And, and you know, you... John Edwards is, is now one of my dear, dear friends. Mm-hmm. So we never do this because it's almost, you know, right. I call you, but, but um, I mean, I, I met you and I have, you know, this lovely friendship with you and you are, and I've done this a lot. I've done, I have been searching and looking. You're a speaker, yes. I'm a speaker and I'm not, you know, 99% of the time I'm going, meh, mm, mm, uh, I don't know. And so I, you know, I went, I went right to the, to the top dog mm. and it, I didn't, I mean, it, it came to me. So, um, I don't know. I just, I would say, look for, look for evidence so you can start trusting because this is really all about trust. It really it, is. It really is. And then when you see the evidence, I now lo- no longer question it. I know I have a team. I, I was in family court in a situation that, you know, I had one of the top 10 lawyers and, and he said, this is, I've never seen a case turn out like this. There were things that happened that, that were in, that I couldn't explain. It was divinely orchestrated and uh, it worked out where I was told by everyone, I've never seen this happen. So if I, you know, you have to, and also be open to the sign and acknowledge it. Don't explain it away when you see it and then you get more and more and more and more and, and don't talk yourself out of it. Right. Just be open to it. You don't have to, you know, just all of a sudden go, you know, there's a blue jay. It must be my mother. And then you, you, you don't have to do things. Just find the truth. Right. Look for the truth and look for evidence and you will start seeing things. Believe it's, just believe it's possible. It's beautiful. You know, yeah. A, 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 my, one of my first boyfriends, or third, or I can't remember, um, his name was Chris Canan. He said to me, he, uh, you know, uh, he sent me a card and it said, there are more to have, there's more things on heaven and earth that are dreamt of in your imagination. Mm-hmm. And I say that would, should, I might not be saying it right, it's Shakespeare. I shouldn't be saying it right. Um, but ha- Hamlet, I think. Is it Hamlet? Macbeth? I don't, I don't know, but. And that would be on my tombstone, which I probably won't have a tombstone, but um, <laughs> I would say that's, that would yes. be my quote. Um, I love it. I love it. You know, and God meets us where we're at. And oh, that's, that's good. And it's true. And so like you're saying, seek, be, be open, ask for signs, ask for evidence, and then acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. And I really do hear all the time from spirit. When you acknowledge it, you show sincere gratitude and appreciation 
um, for that little wink from above, it goes a long way because they recognize it's not a waste of their time or energy and they want to shower you with more when you're appreciative. And Rebecca, one thing, what I, I had done a lot of work on all of this because I wanted to be a good mother for one thing. I wanted to feel good. I wanted to feel good about myself, but I also wanted to be a good mother. And so by the time I had Kate, I had stored some pretty, some pretty good intel in there and some pretty good data. And one of the things I said to her since she was little and even going through those stages that, you know, where your friends reject you, I'd said, find the thought that feels good. And her favorite song in the car, I played all joyful songs all the time. She'd sit in the car seat was from Peter Pan, a song called uh, uh, I'm Flying. And it starts, it's, it's think lovely thoughts, think lovely thoughts and up you go, right? And her arms would fling up in the car seat. And I believe that. So the other, the other thing that I left out in, in, in any advice that, that hopefully will be helpful to somebody is to think lovely thoughts mm. that... Seek, look for evidence, look for comfort, find things that, that, so that you can believe anything's possible. And then also, no matter what's going on, find the thought that feels good, slowly go there, easily go there, sorry. And um, be happy, find, find joy, whether it's a cup of coffee, whatever it is, and really train your mind. I had to do this. Mm-hmm. Train your mind to really um, sit in appreciation, not just because you have to, but really find things that you, uh, that, that you like that make you feel good. It can be something small. Exactly. And doing it. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. It's, um, you know, counting your blessings because that, again, will bring more blessings. And mm-hmm. it's the little stuff, right? It's the small stuff that are sometimes the big stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, this is, this is beautiful. I love so much all of what you said. And I feel like I'm listening to myself talk. Um, Oh, wow. That's a compliment. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) if only. (laughs) Oh, we are so in alignment and that's why law of attraction again, why we are working together and why anyone else. (laughs) Yeah. And why anyone else tuning in and listening to this right now is doing so right again they are matching this level of frequency everything's energy vibrating at different frequencies yeah and so this is just you've made my day i feel you made mine and, and by the way even my talking about this every time i tell the story about africa people you know it, it raises everybody's vibration and and this raises mine and it's good it's good likewise yes yeah. And the hope is anyone listening, it's raising their vibe and giving them hope and faith and, and that knowing, you know, that, that miracles exist. I feel like the teams, I have an awesome team. I'm sure everyone does, but I'm extremely prefer. I I really, you know, I will vouch vouch to that. You have a strong team. And I think it's because you are clear and you're open and very direct And the more right? Open and direct you are, the stronger spirit responds. And it wasn't always like that. It was an intentional allowance for this. Yeah. And that's really good for people to hear, you know, you're never never too old. It's never too late to get on the, that spiritual path of awakening. And again, we're in this crazy time in our world where the veil is thinning and um, it's easier to tap into it and connect with spirit and more and more people are waking up and it's more accepted. It's not as taboo as it once was. Right. Right. Because I know there, there is, I know that there are a lot of famous people. I I just know that by word of mouth, not because you ever said anything, nor will, nor would you, but there's a lot of famous people that speak to you that are in public, much more famous than I am. And I think you know, I thought about this for a second. I thought, I thought, is this going to, you know, I, I, I really didn't think about this that much. I just thought, I, want, I wonder if people who know me, I have a, a, a political profile. Um, there's lots of people that follow me on, on my um, social. I mean, 
congressmen and you know people like Stacey Abrams and Jamie Harrison and senators and the, people that that might this might not be their thing or they they could easily go okay she's wacko um and I thought and then I I mean it was just a quick passing thought because I went I I'm a highly intelligent person and I'm a very reasonable person and I'm very grounded I have I think I have a good balance of keeping my feet on the ground in my you know, my dream in the air. And um, uh, I don't care. It's okay. Amazing. But I just, it's good for someone to, like me, for other people to see someone like me talk about this and share this and give um, comfort to people that they can, um, it's okay for them to explore this. And when you think about Christianity is a, and, and Catholicism and these huge religions that believe in things that there's no evidence to. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus turned water into wine. No kidding. Really? <laughs> you believe that? Okay. I, I, I think it's absolutely possible. But then why wouldn't this be? Exactly. You know, all of the miracles in the Bible or all of the things that people believe in that are universally accepted. How is this different? Not only that, I'm getting evidence. Right. Which builds that authentic faith. You have firsthand experience, you know, you can't deny. And, um, you know, so I think it's fabulous that you and I, and a lot of people out there like us are out there planting seeds in people's minds to open them up to the possibility um, but at the end of the day, that's all we can do, you know, yeah. it's and, and how I feel about any, about religion or anybody's belief, whatever suits you, whatever makes you feel good, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else, whatever floats your boat, exactly. you know, go for it. Right. This floats mine. So there you go. It does. And it, it works well. And I just so appreciate you sharing so candidly. Um, you know, it's very clear that you've transcended that, you know, you're saying you transcended the ego. You, you really don't care what other people think because you're so clear and solid on who you are and your why, right? Yeah. I mean, most of the time, I mean, I have to kind of care what people think to a degree. Well, sure. Um, sure. But for yeah. the, for, about stuff like this and, and no, I don't, I really don't. Good for you. Well, thank you so much for sharing and for being in my life and for inspiring me. I send it so back and thank you for asking me. This was really um, a gift for me to do, I think. Ah. It's, a different, it's a side people don't see of me and I'm, I'm really glad to share that. I love it, my pleasure. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Small Medium at Large. To register for one of my Rebecca Rosen live online events or virtual small group readings and to sign up for my newsletter, please visit my website. RebeccaRosen.com. There you will also find additional resources for your spiritual journey, including my self-guided courses, books, and blog videos. You can also follow me on social media by searching at Medium Rebecca Rosen on Facebook and Instagram. As always, wishing you brightest blessings and all love.